Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday, July 1st. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service, not me. Well, here we are. Tropical Storm Arthur has formed east of Florida. Uh, they did find enough organization with this deep convection last night to upgrade it to a depression, and then this morning, 33 knot winds out of the northern Bahamas prompted an upgrade to Tropical Storm Arthur. And uh, the recon is in there right now. Data transfer has been problematic, but we have gotten enough data that it looks like when they went through the first pass, the pressure here in the red got down to 1,004 millibars or a little bit lower. And uh, this is significant because, like we've been talking about over the last couple of days, it's this period today and tomorrow while this system is east of Florida that is important for how it behaves when it gets up towards the Carolinas. Because if this was a weakling system, like some models indicated a few days, ago um, if it gets absorbed by a front coming to the north it generally won't become that strong but if you get a well-established tropical cyclone like Arthur now is like the European showed back on Saturday and remember I expressed my doubts about the European showing a borderline hurricane hitting North Carolina on Saturday well that is now a scenario that has become the most likely one because the European was right that Arthur would become well-defined while it was still down here near the northern Bahamas and because it has done that now that it comes north here instead of the front coming down hindering it it now provides more favorable conditions because if we look at the water vapor imagery here you can see the long wave trough coming towards the southeast and notice the southwesterly jet stream as that gets closer and closer to the southeastern coast with time it becomes an outflow channel for these uh, you can see the cirrus clouds here indicating the air coming out of the top of the storm and then leaving through this jet stream to the northeast and when that happens that removes air from the center of the storm and allows pressures to fall at the surface which in turn causes the winds to ramp up and that's how these storms like to strengthen and you can see that outflow coming out clockwise in these upper level clouds uh, much nicer today than yesterday and if you look at the northern edge of the storm you can see these cirrus clouds expanding northward away from Arthur Center instead of across the center like they were yesterday yesterday they were coming like this and shearing these storms off to the south but now you can see it starting to form a nice little cirrus bubble here and that's what you really want to see from these storms because it means they're getting well ventilated that means in a sense they can breathe deeper breaths and can really start to take in that moist air at the surface and that's what Arthur is doing now we can see that the northern side is still pretty void of thunderstorms. If we look at radar, uh, the center is right in here, if you can see that loop. Uh, so most of the convection, the heavy rain, is still off to the south of the centers. So this is still asymmetric, um, but in time here, uh, this moist uh, air is going to wrap around and allow thunderstorms to form over most of the circulation and make this a more symmetric storm because again wind shear is lessening as these cirrus clouds expand towards the north now. And the dry air that's here we talked about this yesterday being a problem, uh, but only for 48 hours from yesterday morning, which means the next 24 hours or so, this will continue to limit the northern side as it is now. But remember, yesterday we had a pronounced northeasterly flow shoving this dry tongue towards Arthur's circulation. But today, notice that these low-level clouds are starting to move a little bit more off towards the northeast in the opposite direction away from Arthur. And that's because as this, uh, this jet stream, this front here, presses towards the south, we start to get a more southwesterly flow at most levels of the atmosphere over the southeastern states and that starts to bring this dry air out away ahead of Arthur in the direction that it's moving which means that Arthur has a better chance to wrap this moisture around and mix out whatever dry air is in the circulation and uh, basically isolate itself from this dry tongue here that is now going to be moving away as Arthur starts turning towards the north with time and this will allow Arthur to begin strengthening and in addition to the more favorable upper level conditions with this upper level high starting to build over the center of the storm now this will give Arthur a great chance to really start deepening steadily over the next couple of days and remember it is this trough that's going to start bringing Arthur towards the north and by Friday is when we're expecting it to be somewhere very close to the Outer Banks and this is the National Hurricane Center official forecast track showing the position position just near or over Cape Hatteras by Friday and as a hurricane now forecasting it to reach 80 mile per hour winds and again this is in close agreement with the European model which has shown this kind of a solution for a couple of days now it turns out this model may end up being the one that's right on this system because now that we see it well defined here it gets to strengthen off of the Carolinas later which is what a lot of these storms like to do in this kind of situation is to strengthen right in here and then even on out to sea is where they like to bond 
bomb out a lot. So this will be strengthening as it approaches the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And whether or not this actually makes landfall in North Carolina is a detail that's hard to know still three days in advance. Um, and that will determine how bad conditions actually get for the Outer Banks. Uh, but they should be preparing for a direct hurricane hit here. Watches are not out yet for North Carolina, but those will come once we get closer to this potential landfall or at least a scrape with the coast. Now this is the H wharf model, which I just want to show to give an idea of what the models are now saying for the potential intensity of this storm. It has a hurricane here, 979 millibars. All the purple colors indicate hurricane force winds or stronger. You can see that the southeastern side of the storm, as it is right now, is going to remain the strongest part of the storm, and that's typical with storms like this. But you can still see that even with this, um, there are hurricane winds over the Outer Banks and Cape Hatteras. Um, by Friday, and the, the H wharf track is actually farther to the west, right over the Outer Banks than the official forecast, which is more offshore like this. And uh, either way, this would be a very bad storm for the Outer Banks. The farther west, obviously the worse, um, but of course you should always prepare for the worst and then hope for the best. Um, but there will likely be hurricane watches out for this area um, sometime within the next 24 to 36 hours. And uh, when this comes ashore, or even just offshore, there will be storm surge along the coast and all of that, but you should pay attention to what the National Hurricane Center has to say in their public advisories. And of course, your local National Weather Service office will give you all the pertinent information. This will be coming uh, close to the North Carolina coast on July 4th, so that holiday means that your plans will likely get ruined if you're uh, on this stretch of coastline. So obviously be aware and uh, keep in touch with the official forecast for further information. All right, well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.